Let's get into it. Yo, it's the Mallory Bros Podcast, episode 92, 92 weeks consistent. Yes, sir. I think it's the Michael Strahan episode for me. Michael Strahan is a good 92. Damn, I didn't think of any 92s before this. You got me. 92, we'll go with Michael Strahan. Let me uh, make sure this nigga was actually 92. I think he was. Michael Strahan is 92. Legendary 92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legendary yep, 92. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, shout out to the Giants. Just picked up Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> two, two year contract. That's actually right. solid. That's more solid than people thought. But yep, and we started with the Monique. Uh, I said the Monique. Yeah, we started with Precious. Yeah, if you're listening to the, the if you're watching the visual on YouTube, we started with uh that scene from Precious. Man, art should be dangerous. Yep, um, a very, very, very iconic scene, and I felt like that scene. I wanted to start with. I told Terrell, that's just a scene that is like. Way heavier, and I felt like way more impactful to film than y'all think. And I think we get into that a little bit later. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Incredible. If you haven't seen Precious, it's funny. People make jokes and say, oh, you look like Precious or whatever. But if you watch the movie for Monique's performance, I'm telling you. But we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to say, I mean, it's been a week. We don't never do like a check-in. Nigga, we do see you have each other happy. No, I mean for the pot. Yeah, you're oh, right. Okay. We see each other, so we don't check in, but did you want to, you know? It was a chill week, chill weekend. It was quiet for me because it was kind of rainy Yeah. this past weekend um, or last weekend before we shoot it now. Um, but for me, it's been pretty chill. You know, I've been, you know, hitting this gym, trying to get right. I'm in and, a, and I'm in a cut. you good. I'm in a cut now, so I'm in a deficit because I'm trying. I got to get my, I have to get my stomach together, bro. Your boy was bulking and got that bulk gut. Mm -hmm. Y'all thought I was playing when I said that he was a, a chunky man. I'm really not. He, he was out here gutted. He was gutted out this joint. I'm I just, never had the belly. I'm just trying to get my cuts back. Once I get cut as I want to be, yeah. I told myself I'm going to get as cut as I want to be, and then I'm going to just sustain and just build yeah. muscle. And so your boy been doing more, you know. But other than that, bro, my life is pretty boring. Yeah. Real chill. Bro, you should record with the headphones off. You ever, y'all ever noticed that Terrell? Well, you, if you watch the visual, Terrell never records with the headphones off. It's because I need to be able to listen in case one of us ain't in the mic. You don't even know how sometimes I'll do this. Y'all see you, how reserved he's, he is? He like the look. nigga that come in your crib and got his jacket on the whole time. Nah, I care about quality. This let me tell, let me tell you something about Terrence. We can have the TV playing. Like Terrence watches the most random shit. I swear it's the most random. You'll go in his room and he's watching a. He's watching a Latrell Sprewell documentary about when this nigga was playing with the Knicks and had the haircut. Y'all think about, and just it, stop right there, wait, wait, wait. Y'all just really think about how fire of a documentary that would be if that, if that was a fact. Right. That would be a fire documentary. I would watch that video right now. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. I'm like, all right. Y'all niggas was right. What was they calling them spinners, though? Was those not called Sprewell? They was called Sprewell. That was an era. It was. That nigga had it, the culture by the... By the he did. And I feel like niggas forget that Latrell Sprewell played in the NBA Finals. They See? almost won the whole thing. Hold on, wait, I know I ain't tripping either. This is the shit that I don't give a fuck about, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but look, he'll have that playing, and I, we sit down to the podcast. I'm like, yo, your volume's on. Why you didn't turn your TV off? He like, I don't really care, bro, if that's in the background. Like, you don't think that people are mine? I'm like, nigga, no. We need to have quality. This motherfucker want to have, or he'll be watching... Look, he'll watch um, a Ladanian Tomlinson college mixtape. And I'm like, this nigga's not even a Chargers fan. I just respect, I feel like, good people who are good in sports. And I don't know about y'all. I can watch sports moments for the rest of my life. The same moments. I don't know about y'all. I could sit and watch, like, the greatest NBA dunks of 2021. Yeah, that's some shit to watch. And I feel like I've seen all of these dunks, but I'm, I will sit through that whole... 12 minute video. It's actually television cancer. I'm not going to get on that. But Jesus. Mm -hmm. I said, I ain't watching this bullshit. Next thing you know, the credits, the look, the little, the, the joint for the next video coming up. I said, damn, it's been 10 minutes. <laughs> I watched this whole fucking thing. Bro, I'm telling you. Anyway, Terrell, 
is lame. He can't even take his headphones off. Look at him. He looks like a DJ. You look like, you literally look like, if you look at him, he's dressed like he's in Sandlot. This man is dressed like Benny. What's the dude's name? Benny. You got the hat that he gave Smalls. That was, was the a, first hat that he gave Smalls on his head right My now. man Benny was a legend, bro. If you think about it. He had that same sweater on. First of all, he got that the, sweater from a. Uh, he went to the MLB. And you sitting here looking like a, a Sunday service member with a Jesus is King t-shirt on, boy. You look like yay. You look like crazy yay from episode three of Gene Yaws. This nigga jumped in the pool <laughs> from Wendy Pepper. You said what? <laughs> episode three Gene Yaws. I said you look like crazy yay from episode three <laughs> Shut up, my sis. Honestly, this joint, this shirt, I feel like I got on the Jesus is King shirt. This album I did not respect when it first dropped. I felt like let me throw on the I said I did not respect. I did fuck with the album when it first dropped, but I mean like listening to it more recent, that joint, yeah. I respect that joint. That I'm not going to lie. I listened to that Sunday service joint. Uh, that joint is fire the too. The old Sunday service yes. joint. That joint was fire. Yep. They got that... Uh, that that rain that rain joint, I heard it on Instagram first. You know the niggas real or something. Yeah, and making this matcha tea in the morning. Look, but, real quick. Fire. And you know what? There's a lot of songs from that album that can be used in different mm. things like that. That's not hip hop. I think people saw that and thought it was hip hop. But I wanted to start with this. I don't know if you've seen this, bro, on Facebook. Anybody else? You ever see the show on Facebook? It's a tattoo show, but it's like the person that's doing your tattoo is like your ex friend from like I love that show. years ago, and they'll tat some rag, some crazy shit on you. Yeah, I love that show. This girl tatted dog tags on her friend, right? Uh huh. And when her friend looked at it, she said, "Come over here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> come, come here, bitch." <laughs> and they they always be like, "You want to fuck my man?" I'm like. <laughs> What the fuck show do these people go on where they willingly let somebody tat them blindly? You don't know what they're tatting on you? I don't know if the tat. And you know are... you got like baggage and beef with them? It's fucked up, bro. <laughs> it's fucked up, but you know what? I don't know if the tats are really real, but they do a great job of selling it. I was going to... And you don't know the beef until after the tattoo. Right. That's another form to me of like phone can't... Like, it is like attention span cancer, bro. I can watch so many of those videos because I'm like, I know damn well he didn't... He didn't just willingly let him take this. And you know what? People mess with me because of Facebook. People mess with me. When all of my men was over here uh, a little while ago, I was like, yeah, you ever see you see such and such on Facebook? And they all was like, you still be on there? Y'all no, are I, tripping. I still follow my alma mater, high school and college, on Facebook mm -hmm. so I can see what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. um, but also, bro, y'all think Twitter is reckless? Right. Only thing Twitter gives you that Facebook don't give you is porn because they don't. They don't fuck with that on Facebook. You can't just be up there fucking. Right. But um, Facebook, you can see somebody get robbed in broad daylight. Then the next will be a motivational self-help video. Mm -hmm. The next will be a recipe video. And the then, next one will be a man rescuing a turtle from like a, uh -huh. a river or some shit. Yeah, I know. You, you, you know what I always fall victim to? What? The dog fucked up. Look, he was he he was fucked up they put and a they found him. Look, they put a zip tie around his neck. The dog fucked up. And then they show the process of the dog getting better. Somebody finally adopted a joint. Right. You can have my 10 minutes every time. I'm telling you that shit. Bro, I'm telling you that shit. Or like the... All right, since we on the topic of Facebook. Uh -huh. There are a lot of people on Facebook that do like fake ass pranks that are very obviously fake. Oh, yeah. But they do so many of them that I feel like some people... I've even found myself sitting there waiting and it's like you're waiting for nothing. You're just low-key paying them. Like this lady was like behind her husband on his computer. And she's setting all of this shit up. And it wasn't until she got halfway through setting everything up, I was like, he would have definitely heard her. Yeah. So now I'm waiting for this fake reaction. But I've been watching so long that I want to see it even though I know it's going to be fake. Yep. The attention span. It's cancer. The I'm calling it cancer because you can't cure that. No, for real. You can't got beat to that. the point where, remember, we when we grew up, YouTube was YouTube. Like, people was, we grew up on Kevin Edwards, yep. Spoken Reasons, people that was, like, being super creative. And right. then the culture changed to a reactive type of content, like mm -hmm. pranks. 
Yeah, like, and think about what a prank did. Like, visually, it was great content because it's like, oh shit. Ain't even know. She ain't even know. Yeah. And so the anticipation, that adrenaline, that little small adrenaline rush you get waiting for that person to find out. Yeah. You know the backstory. We just waiting to see if this shit unfold. It's like a movie that you know the nigga. It's like watching In Too Deep. It's like you said, the you recipe. You know he's undercover. You just wait for the shit to all to spell out. Mm -hmm. That's the recipe for all TV shows now, I swear. They show you, look at clickbait, all of these shows coming out here. The undoing, all oh, yeah. of that shit. They're going to show you what happened. Somebody got killed, and then you want to know how, or you want to figure it out how. Yeah. And, but yeah. what I was going to say is that people went away from... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get this thing. <laughs> Somebody, look. <laughs> it's when people... <laughs> <laughs> the, the market went away from real pranks, and now they're doing them drinks on Facebook, where yeah. it's like fake-ass pranks, and they know it. They even put in the title and be like... Fake. And guess what? People still watch them. It's like, fuck it. People Facebook's, con Facebook's content, you were right. Facebook, I've told, I told Terrell this all the time. They have, hands down, the most decorated timeline. You're going to get stuck on a, face or on a Facebook timeline, and you'll be on that timeline longer than TikTok, Instagram. I swear to you. You know what I just realized? We sound old. Nah, I'm telling you. Because these young niggas do not have Facebook, bro. They don't. Well, you know what? I'll tell y'all this. The reason why we had Facebook probably is because we are old, we're a little older, we bro. We're older, but that's a whole different community. Y'all don't realize it's over there, though. There are, you know how many things y'all see and laugh at on Twitter that came from Facebook, that started on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Not saying that you should get on there and like start requesting friends, though, because that would kind of be weird. Weird. Yeah. You just, if you don't have one, I don't I get wouldn't. on there and accept friend requests and shit. You know, I'm not doing that. I might get on that joint and just look at the TL. Right. The only people that should be making Facebook pages are people that are old, like older people, like 40 plus. Cause right. Aunt, look, Aunt Charlene is on Facebook. You didn't see? We gotta make you a page. Right. <laughs> so you can go in and say something to her. Yeah, we've been trying to get my mom to make a page for years. You give old people their access to email each other and their conversation be the most driest, blandest shit ever. I know. Hey right? Howard, how have you been? Good, Tisha. I'll see you later soon at the event. Why did y'all even need to do this shit? <laughs> y'all could have got each other a phone number for this bullshit. You ever see how old people text? Uh, yeah, you or know you what I'm saying? you ever text somebody that's a little older? We so used to being so decorated. That's how we've been communicating for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? No bullshit. So it's like text, 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 text. They just picked this shit up. You can tell, like, look, 10 years ago. You can tell that they just started clicking them. them what Dad will be like, look, what time are you off? What are you doing? Look, very not, flat. Not doing anything. Lowercase everything. Making chicken dot. It's like, all right. Or the, for me, it's the, the responses when you be like, all right, I'll see. I'll, we should do this and we should do that. Okay. Like, damn, nothing else. Yeah, like you're like. But I would say this lastly about Facebook. Facebook is like, a, like you said, nobody has it. We do sound old. It's Facebook, a national treasure. To me, it's kind of like Tumblr in a way where the people that still use it love it. Nah, y'all tripping. I'm sorry. Majority of the world uses Facebook. If you don't use Facebook, just know you're not part of the majority. We're not going to do that bum ass shit Terrell talking about trying to shit on Facebook. No, I'm, I wouldn't. No, 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 no. I'm just talking about the young folks. Younger people and even people that's in the, the high 20s. Some people just gave up on Facebook a long time ago and never get on them. Yeah. But um, let's do this twin question real quick. Which one <clears throat> out of me and you? Because I want to know what you think. Which one of us gets the most girls? Which one of us gets the most women? Ladies. Terrence, please. This is a stupid question. I feel question. like growing I'm, up, if I may. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that means no interruption. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> growing up, and I ain't going to be long. Growing up, I felt like Terrell had me. Because he got his, his balls dropped before mine, obviously. You know what I mean? How was that obvious? He got furry before me. You know what I'm saying? He got the the, the I the had the facial hair first. And nah, you know Taz, we was about to say. And I gave him his steez. Look, I gave him all of his game. Everything that he had, I gave. I always have given Terrell his game. But look, Terrell, you going to lie? You said no interruption, so I'm respecting right, you so you can respect me. <laughs> all right, bet. In full sale, when we was in college, I'm going to give y'all this little story real quick. I let, my, I let my scruff, we used to call it a scruff, because me and Terrell used to do what's called a chin strap. We used to get the joint that came... Take where your side it, it was burn, your sideburn, yep. and then it just went down your jawline. It was no beard. It was just a line from your chin 
up. It was all right. That's how it was. The, it was the Morris chestnut at uh -huh. one point. Look, yep. you know, but eventually I felt like I cut my sideburns off and let them grow. And then I just let everything, all my scruff go. And then Terrell said, you look stupid as fuck. Why the fuck you letting that scruff go? Why you letting the scruff go? Why you letting the scruff go? And I said, bro, for real, for real, this drink could turn into a beer, for real, if I let it grow. And Terrell was like, you dumb as shit, that's dumb as shit. You need to keep doing the sideburns. So what he keep doing? Sideburns. But guess what? That scruff started getting darker. And Terrell said, hmm, I guess he got a point because it does look like a beer. He started going, growing his scruff. Never cut it since. <laughs> this nigga has had a beard since. Put him on that. Look, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. I'm keeping it tally. <laughs> you better. Uh, what, was, what was we? Uh, I was looking at this nigga on YouTube named 360 Wave Process one day. Randomly came across his video. And he had these dope ass waves in his head. And I said, you know what? This is my real story. I said, damn, you know what? This nigga low-key has the same hair as me. Cause he would show like he showed like a picture of like his hair before. So I'm like, all right, bet, you know what? Bet. I think if I follow what dude say in the video, I'ma just get waves. And all he said I had to do was wet my hair in the morning, uh, get me a brush that I really respected. Like go to the go to the store, get a real brush and not no bullshit brush. Yeah. Something like a medium brush. Basically brush my hair, put the product in my hair. He showed me the little grease to get. It's easy. I was like, damn, that's easy. I can do that. The hard part going to be the do-rag at night. So I remember that one night, I think I came out of my room with the do-rag on. Let me tell y'all when I do new shit, it's not something that I don't see Terrell and he's like, wow, you know what? What you doing? It's the absolute ops. It's the opposite. I came out of my room with the do-rag. He said, do-rag? Why you got a do-rag on your head? Look, negative as shit. Do rag on your head. <laughs> I'm about to try to get waves because I just watched this video where this dude said if I just brush my hair every day, then my hair will wave up and it'll look better. And it'll look like this. And I showed him the nigga's hair. And he said, You about to waste your fucking time brushing your hair. You about to waste your time. I'm not about to do that bullshit. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm not, not about, about to go to sleep with a do rag on my head. I draw the line right there. I never said uh, you was going to waste your time. Terrell, you didn't. You definitely shit on it. He shit on it. And guess what? He started coming in my room after. I would take the do-rag off in the morning. He coming in my in the bathroom. Cause me and Trey used to share a bathroom back then. Uh -huh. So the nigga coming and just brush his teeth. He look, he take a glance up and say, damn, what did I just see? He starts seeing the little ripples, the little ripley ripleys. The nigga starts, look. He said, you know what? You got a point. I'm about to start getting waves. Has had waves ever since. I gave the nigga all his game. So in the end of the day, ladies. Hold on, what I'm getting ready to say. What does it have to do with? I gave him his whole steeze. He wouldn't even be this guy if it wasn't for me. Low key. But to answer the very, very, very uh, long-awaited question, who gets the most girls? I think now, me. <laughs> Terrell me. is, Terrell is, is low key, like, you out the game for real. Like, you're like literally, your jersey is low key, like, rising up and we looking like, Rap damn, this KG nigga. shit. Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> That ass though, Terrell, I think was, I think you had a respectable. Come on, if bro. you if you put in your jersey up there, Terrell's sure. respect. Jersey in the rafter. Terrell respected. I'm still I'm still getting mine. I'm on my look. I'm on my uh, Jamal Crawford. I'm still trying to put up fifty. Nah, you know I'm who still you still trying to <laughs> pass me the rock. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you you uh, you you uh, Matisse Thibault. How he young as shit. Average. <laughs> <laughs> you got my man Matisse fucked up. Hey, look, I don't know I don't know these basketball niggas. Just pick the name. Tell them how you get more girls than me, bro. But um, first of all, just going back to the beard thing, Terrence did have scruff first, but he did not, in fact, have a beard. This <laughs> motherfucker had the most scruffiest. He looked like Captain McScruff. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know. He looked like a fucking, I don't know what you look like. Just a dirty, just I definitely dirty. looked dirty as fuck. It was the rough days. I had to figure it out, though. We both. Y'all can go back and look at the old vlogs from 2015. Look at this nigga's face. And see if you see this big scruff. You can literally see us both looking the same. Because I gave him the game. Also, you couldn't even really get a beard in college for real. Right, that's why I didn't keep it going, but low key. Let's this keep is, it on. This is what he does. He takes credit. Number two, the wave thing. I never shitted on Terrence for having waves. Never. I told him... I told him you really about to try? 
<laughs> man, you really about to do this, Jay? All right, bet. Because he always got some shit he doing. So I left him alone. This is what I'll tell you. Y'all see Terrence, all oh, he getting bigger oh, in the gym, right? Who was in the gym first? 2016, basement, me. Bought a weight bench. <laughs> At, bought a whole weight bench. Remember, we had that weak ass uh, iron, what was that thing? The bow flex that mom and dad had that was yeah, that, that shit was, was rusted horrible. and dry rotted out. Yeah. 50 pounds felt like 150. Look, me now, I'm like, I could have got a little workout. I'm telling you. you, you that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no bullshit, but look though. Who went out and bought a real bench, real barbell, real 40, real plates? Dre. Me! <laughs> also... <laughs> Bitch ass name. <laughs> Look, after that, guess what? We moved out of my parents' house. I said, Dad, you can keep the weight bench. Don't worry about it. Because guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and buy my own weight set, which I did. The bench that we got upstairs collecting dust, because we both go to the gym now. Who bought that? Me. The, 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 the weights you go up there and conveniently pick up? The ones that got me started on my whole uh -huh. fitness journey? Started, started this whole fitness journey. <laughs> so I'm responsible <laughs> for this nigga. <laughs> what is he talking about? You can never, you can, don't you ever talk about me. You see, this is why you don't always tell your mouth about the best. Because I'm going to shut up with you real quick. Oh, some Richard Sherman shit. L.O.B. The Nick Crabtree. I swear he was about to be like, that nigga Crabtree. Uh, oh shit, my bad. Okay, yeah, you right. But in me. terms of who get more girls now, it would 100% be Terrence. I'm going to tell y'all why though. As we got older, when we was young, I was the funniest twin. It was, it was set in stone. Terrell's the funny one. <laughs> Terrence is the one that's just angry, and he wasn't as funny as me. But as we got older, and my childhood friends could tell you this shit, Terrence just started to be funny as shit randomly. And then now the Terrence that y'all love, I see the fucking comments. Nobody talks about me. <laughs> Everybody says Terrence is true. A, yes, it is true. Terrence is the funniest person on earth. All oh, Terrence is so funny. This motherfucker wasn't funny when we was little, though. I had but look. So now the nigga's funny, so that shit just like work for him. Also, Terrence was in a relate. Terrence was a relationship dude. For, when yeah. I, in my four or five years single, he was in a relationship, and then now it just kind of switched. Well, I'm in a relationship, and he's living his life, kind of figuring it. I don't know. Single, and look, and mingling, <laughs> and looking for a lady. You sound like a for uh, looking for a date. To the Batman joint. Somebody hit me up. This is getting ridiculous. Somebody, look, Terrence, you know what? No, fuck that. Still I'm telling you this on air. It. You're going to go and see it yourself. Whether you find a date or not for your, for your job. Yeah. <laughs> look, <laughs> large popcorn, please. Large drink. Yeah, just one. <laughs> you got a lady that you getting ready to? No. <laughs> and I don't need my receipt. And I don't need to be asked. Manager. <laughs> <laughs> Invasion of pro... <laughs> I need this people with a manager. <laughs> he asked me who I'm bringing to the <laughs> Oh, I took that survey on uh the place we went. Yeah. And ripped that girl at the front to shreds. Fuck with me. Terrell Give me fucked bad. up service. Let me tell you. Y'all don't something. give Terrell bad service, so he's gonna do the survey and shit on you. If you <laughs> if you give me bad service, because bro, I value service so much. Even if you, if I see you busy as fuck, yeah. but you still try like tapping in with me, I'm cool. I respect the hustle, even with servers. But if you trash, I spot it. Like when it, let me just tell y'all some restaurant etiquette real quick before you get to this topic. I wasn't. We were still on the. On if a waiter, the if a waiter comes to your table, me and my girl, her brother went out the, uh, last week, right? Fogo. Right. The nigga comes to our table and he says, "Y'all ready to order?" Fogo over don't even have raiders though. They do. I thought they just come over with the meat tray. They Pause. do. They do. They, they come over with it, but you still have somebody to bring y'all water if you want to order a drink, if you want to do a meal. Somebody, you got to put in that order. Oh, okay, yeah. The nigga comes to the table and says, y'all ready to order over here? And then everybody was like, oh, no, we probably, I guess we'll do water, and then, you know, we're going to take a look at the menu. All right, well, uh, just let me know. First of all, who the fuck are who you? Who the fuck is he? Are you the host? So you're going to tell us so when our look, waiter comes. When he, cool, so when our waiter... When he... <laughs> Before he left, I said, what's your name, bro? Oh, he was like, oh, I don't know. I think his name was might have been Tyler or something. If you listen to the podcast, shout out to you, but take this advice. <laughs> <laughs> but your server is supposed to tell you their name. Right. And y'all like, I served for two years, TGI Friday, shout out. Um, I served for two years. So I understand 
when you are shit doing a shit job, yeah. when you're overwhelmed, or when you just a solid and they, like, yo, my water should never hit the bottom of the glass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's like, yo, you need another one? I got you. Oh, I'ma just bring it. You know what I'm saying? Didn't know if you want another. I was the type yeah. of server that I would be across the hall, like, y'all good? All right, right back. Or they would be like, oh well, and I run over there. You need another I'm honey mustard? There. I yep. got you. So like, it's just little shit like that. Me and Terrence go to this place. I'm gonna leave it the location undisclosed. But as soon as we walk in, she like, y'all got an appointment? And it's like, no, hello, how are you? Welcome to such and such. And then we was like, yeah. She said first and last name. First name. First name. No, she just said name. Name. And I'm like, I know Terrence. He looked at me, I looked at him, I said, Bill, we're not going to say shit. Then she says, name. I said, first name. or last. First or last. First or last. Ma'am. And this Ma is my thing. And that's why, and let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just get nauseous when I get around bad service. <laughs> <laughs> I need a trash can. Look, I'm going to be sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look, though, I feel like when you're younger, people don't take you as serious or they think, you think I'm a 20 year old? Yeah, you think I'm like 18, 19, 20. You think because yeah. I got on a, 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 you know, a, uh, a hoodie and I look like I'm dressed for Sandlot and I just came from the big game All right. and I was in a big pickle earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this just nigga. ran from a dog. You think I'm 18? <laughs> young, but I'm telling you, they treat they treat younger people like if I was 50, would you do this? Right. And so you think because uh, the respect is written on my exactly. face, and you yeah. know I got seven years management. So I can tell you a little bit. <laughs> this nigga Terrell, I'm telling y'all, y'all should really step into any business with Terrell. He's looking at it way different. I could be in that joint looking at whatever. He's like, you walk in a Staples with Terrell and he'll be like, I don't even know why they have these lined up right here. And I'm like, what is he talking about? Is he talking about the way they have the store set up? And he yeah, is. Because some like, shit is like, he could walk into any business forever. I feel like and run a retail box. He can do it. Come on, man. He needs to let that shit go, though. And look, if Terrence, if Terrence keep acting up, and I will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> they just announced that Kendrick Lamar and Eminem are doing the soundtrack for Wakanda Forever. Dope. Um, and the question that I wanted to ask you, I think that's dope, but are we done waiting for Kendrick Lamar? Like, uh, it is March. Uh -huh. His album was supposed to come out last year. I, yeah. I'm not about to do this for a whole nother year. Kendrick, I don't know, bro. Motherfuckers got mad at me. Be, they, they got mad at me when I had tweeted because they, I don't know if you announced, he's one of the headliners for Rolling Loud. Okay. And I said, he about to go up there and perform All Right and Money Trees. Like, what you about to go up there and perform? And everybody's like, yeah, well, they also said this means new album. Come on, bro. They've been saying this shit for years. Are we done waiting for Kendrick? No. We will never be done waiting for Kendrick. Never. It's almost like Rihanna. It's like somebody saying you done waiting on Rihanna album. No, 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 no. Hold up, Terrell. We are definitely done. Some of us are done waiting on Rihanna's album when it's not coming. But it's the thing. Any idea that she might drop an album, like if she says R8 or R9 coming soon, y'all going to be right on y'all house. going to be right there. You're right. Even though but look, I, I, don't think, I don't think Rihanna can top that last one she did. I would be surprised you tripping. I would be. You might, you might not be. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I wouldn't be waiting, though. I would just be surprised and happy. But it's the thing. But Kendrick... I don't have him on this, this list of to come anymore. Because my thing is this. The only reason why I'm saying this, y'all, is you're doing an Eminem Wakanda Forever album with... It's like, you shouldn't have time for that because you about to be doing your album, right? Like, Oh, yeah. You know, like, are we going to get your album or are we just going to keep hearing about all the other shit that you're working on? Which oh, is great for you. If I had to fight. I'm tired of it. Kendrick, I'm tired of it. Like, come on, we want, we, we, we want. You, you said we was gonna be all right, and then nigga, we got all right. Now we waiting <laughs> for something else. Nah, we ain't all right. Dr. Umar come out of nowhere? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we not all right yet. Honestly, I will never, ever, ever not be waiting for Kendrick. That's my guy. But, yeah. Rihanna can make that, uh, you know, I got Fenty, whatever. We just don't really be knowing what's going on with Kendrick, so we like, damn. But I also don't wanna be a selfish fan. You never know what somebody going through. Chadwick was literally going through cancer. Right. And God forbid, but you never know what somebody's going through. So, Kendrick, we will continue to wait, but we all right. Stop asking if we all right or saying we're going to be all right. Nigga, we are fine now. Nigga, we're good. I want to throw up a rest in peace to a guy named Mike Mora, if you didn't know or you didn't see. That was Khalees' husband who passed away oh, yeah. from stomach cancer this past yes. weekend or this past week. Um, I just wanted to come on and say, like, that was some news that stuck out to me, mainly for not only myself, but, like, 
all of like the fellas that will listen to this podcast. We got people that listen to this podcast from age. I feel like from young to old. So I feel like it, it kind of goes to to everybody that we got to kind of start moving a little bit different. Like this was a that to me was a little bit of a culture shock for me. Like, OK, yeah, it would have to start now. Yes. I can't regret my 20s yep. and my 30s. That's true. And, and I'm what? talking about like my diet. One hundred percent. I was gonna say that. Terrence is the motherfucking Chick Fil A oh, captain. But it's not terrible. But it's it ain't terrible. But it's too often. But sometimes we just be like, I'm gonna just do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I caught myself making a little healthy meal just now: chicken breast, that was green good, bean and rice, and it was good. And sometimes we might think, but if you think about it, it's for the better. And that's all vegans' whole point is. If y'all haven't seen what the hell. It's like a big vegan campaign to try and get you to go vegan. Yeah. But they, you can't argue some of the shit they talk about, about what red meat do to you. Yeah. Especially black men. Our prostates are not built to last. Our colons are not built to last. We got to take, we got to take action. And I just wanted to come on and basically say that seeing that news about him passing away from stomach cancer, I know sometimes people think I don't smoke, so I can't get lung cancer or I'm not around a whole bunch of... You know, whatever. So I can't get a certain type of cancer, but we all are kind of out here eating certain ways. And I felt like shout out to the people who might have already started your diet journey. You got your diets down. But for the people that might be like me, that's kind of muddling the line between a good diet and falling off. It's articles like this, man. You hear somebody passing away young. I want to say he was in his 40s. Yeah. Somebody that's that's a young age. That's going to be the age where your baby girl looks like. She's 10 and she might be, you know, yeah. like these are the, that's 40s. I feel like if I have kids based on the way my life is projected right now, that 40s age of mine will be my pivotal parenting years. They yep. need me. They right. going to need me. So I don't want to have no stomach issue or do nothing. And I feel like now the message that I want to send is to just be more aware. Like I told myself, like you said, I'm a Chick-fil-A king. I'm trying to cut that shit out. Like. That shit's not even like good to me anymore. Mm. It's not. It just feels like you're right. We'll be like, I'm gonna just run at it because it's right there. It's quick. It yeah. a, I don't gotta, you know. That you know what it is? Over with. It's the lack of green. It's the lack of green. It's the process. The processed meat, even the fries. Fruits. You get. No, fruits I'm saying too. You no, need, I'm, I'm just saying you need. You don't have. I'm no talking about either. things you don't. Oh me. yeah. No, you're right. Like but that's why. Like you that. know what? Spend the extra money and go to Panera. Yeah. If you can afford to, and get the sandwich salad. Or just get some... Now, it's not really... A, for me, baguette. For me, it's more so just about prioritizing my diet around, mm. like, healthier options that kind of give me what I need, and not just being one-sided. Like, if you eat a pizza, that's one-sided as fuck. That's just cheese, bread, and whatever your topping was. Yeah. But you see how one-sided of a meal that is? Yep. So, for me... And that's why I felt like I don't get my healthy round of... Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, quick shout out BK Juices, man. We on that CMOS. We on that... Yeah. We on them good juices. All types of Me juices. and Terrell actually have a decent diet, but I'm just saying, even this news... And we buy a lot of fruit. Yeah. We... Apples. Bananas. Grapes. We fuck them grapes up. Yeah. I'm on the oatmeal bad. heavy. I'm on the... High fiber, yeah. I'm on spinach heavy. So my thing is, like, my diet's not bad, y'all, but... I need to come on here and tell y'all, look, y'all, we got to get our fucking stomachs together and make sure that we yeah. are taking care of ourselves because we can't lose. How old was Mike Moore when he died? I don't know the name. I mean, I don't know the age. I just know he was in his, his 40s, I think. Oh, okay. Maybe well, he was older, but I just know. Whenever you hit stomach or something. We lost Chadwick to stomach. Yeah. So it's like, yo, all right, bet. Maybe we really are fucking ourselves up with some of the shit that we're eating because we're not going to talk about. What was Chad, what was Chadwick eating? Did this run in his family? Was this you know I don't I know. know for him you know? to die at forty three from it like from like I'm twenty eight you never know that's why I'm saying you think you got fifty more years when you could have thirteen right so since we doing a uh, since we doing RPs I want to give two RPs one to uh, Scott Hall AKA Raising Ramon wrestling legend yeah wrestling legend which was one of the biggest most heartbreaking stories because he literally was just going in for hip surgery. Had three heart attacks. And so, from the complications of that, uh, we unfortunately lost him. He was just literally trying to get a hip replaced. It wasn't like he was... Shannon Sharp just got a hip replaced. Right, exactly. So, you never really know. And he was 63. Shannon, 54. And so, 
it just sucks, man. It just sucks when you lose a legend. I also want to uh, send an RIP to Tracy um, Braxton. Yeah. That Tracy was tough Braxton. for them. Yeah. You know, just RIP. prayers to that family. Yeah. But, uh, damn. Or well, anybody that might be related or connected, the Braxtons are from this area. Yeah. Or... No, 100%. Yeah, been from this area, yeah. Absolutely. So anybody that might listen and be connected, prayers uh, up. 50 Cent extended his support um, to Monique. He basically came out and said, I don't forget what, exactly what he said, but he was talking about Oprah and Tyler Perry don't want to work with her no more, but I'm about to take her under my wing and we about to get this work, basically. Right. We about to get this work. And that just made me think about Monique and who she just kind of was in, like, our, like, in our culture for a minute. If you think about it, there was a point in time where Monique stood on stage and did the Beyonce uh-oh joint. Man, 2003, the 2003 BET Awards. One of the best years. Yep. Right. I think, and at one point, I'm telling you, at one point, Monique was the woman for, like, women empowerment, mm -hmm. proud to be a bigger woman. All of her roles were just self-confidence. Like, literally, she was never, like, shit on in any of her roles. Like, she's always been a woman of just that just... I mean, if you think about it, this is 2003, too, so this is before her time. She's done so much in the span of... She has, she has, and what I wanted to come on here and say is Precious, and the reason why we started with Precious, is mm -hmm. that role and that movie, I think what y'all need to understand, is bigger than... Precious was a huge movie for our community, period. It was the first movie that was directed by a black filmmaker... Let Lee, me make sure Lee I Daniel. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the first Best Picture nominee... Nominated by a black director. So uh -huh. this is first best picture nominee. I mean, this is before Do the Right Thing. This is before Malcolm X. Like those movies that where we got where we started saying, damn, they're gonna give us the award for the acting, but they're not gonna give us the award for the movie. The film, yeah. Right. Precious got the nod. They didn't win though. Precious only won for Monique's performance and they won for best adapted screenplay. Believe it or not, it was the first Oscar. For a black writer, for black, uh, I'm sorry, for first adapted, um, oh, okay, adapted yeah. screenplay. Yeah. Lee Daniels? <laughs> nah, this dude named Joffrey, I got it right here. Joffrey Fletcher. Oh, okay. Was the person who adapted the screenplay. I mean, so to me, I felt like this was a door opening film. The, the film Precious, the budget was $10 million. It went on to make about $64 million worldwide. Success. Monique's salary was only 50 grand. $50,000, and she was contractually obligated to promote the film. So you got $50,000 for your role. Damn, I don't want a $10 million $50, budget. $50,000? She was only paid $50,000. And she was told that she, and it was in her contract for that fifty grand that she had to promote it. So she had to go and do like the tours and do like the little events to get the movie seen. Just some backstory on the movie. Um... Precious was produced by Lee Daniels only at first. That $10 million was Lee Daniels Entertainment. And then he took that to Shit. Lionsgate. And then there was a feud between Lionsgate and the Weinstein Company on who would push the film and distribute it. And I think they said Harpo Studios, Oprah, and Tyler Perry Studios entered because Oprah saw it, loved it. She said, she said it split me open. <laughs> All right, Oprah. <laughs> right. <laughs> she said as soon as Oprah got it, I mean, as soon as Oprah saw it, she called Tyler Perry, said, I don't know who did this movie, but I want to fund it. Tyler Perry said it was done by Lee Daniels. Oprah calls Lee Daniels. Relationship started, started okay, there. Yep. And then if, was, if it wasn't for Tyler Perry's connections with Lionsgate, um, that's what really got the film distributed. That's what Precious went out under Lionsgate. Oh, okay. I only say nice. all of this because Tyler say. does have a really good relationship with Lionsgate. Well, you know, Tyler Perry had his... probably already did Daddy's Little Girls, Lionsgate. He did every, all yeah, his everything whole... Lionsgate. Yep. So, yeah, that was that entryway. So, shout out Tyler Perry and Oprah for even bringing that Lee Daniels movie mm -hmm. to the light. I mean, that's $10 million and end up being one of the most impactful movies. But they said she was tough to work with on that set, or so they say, because the relationship went sour. Now, I regardless of what they might have said about how she acted on the set, that's all left up to her side versus they side. Yeah, so it's three sides to a story. Your side, they side, and the truth. Right. I just really wanted to talk about Monique and how that role that she did, people don't realize that Monique herself has been, has had like incest in her family that she kind of dealt with and it was kind of traumatic for her. I don't know if she's a, a direct product from it, but I know it's, it was very close to her and her taking on that role was kind of her way of embracing 
what my family might have been to shed light. Like, that was a huge role for her. That movie does not win the Oscars or even get the acclaim that it does without her performance. She was only paid $50,000 50 for it. grand for that. You get gold from it. Now the price, uh, like yesterday's price is not today's price. People think that Monique took that Oscar win and people want to say that she is hard to work with and they just shit on her reputation. And now every time we see her in the media, it's almost like she's fighting to get her side across because it's never really been put across yep. when, you, when you think about it. And I just started feeling bad for her. This is a woman who was in, and I got him right here, just some of, the, my, some of her highlights. Welcome Home, Ross and Jenkins, probably one of my favorite joints that she did. But Baby Boy, Soul Plane, Two Can Play That Game, Almost Christmas, Half Past Dead, Bessie, which she got paid more to do Bessie on HBO, which she was like a small role in that than she did to do Precious, which is ridiculous. I'm sorry. She got two stand-ups, and she hosted the All-Star Comedy Joint in 2010. Killed it. Legend for the Parkers. Legend for her role, for her oh, side yeah. roles in Moesha, but like... I want y'all to keep in mind, this is somebody who I felt like should have been on a level of like Steve Harvey. Let's keep it 100. Yeah. Monique should be rich. That's true. She should be rich. She was doing queen of comedy shit when Steve Harvey and then was doing kings of comedy shit. Oh, yeah. Her some more. Uh, yeah. For her to host the- Shirley, a, um, I forget. Yeah, bro. But like her hosting the BET Awards, her being like this figure in, in, the, in the public, I felt like- she was on such a good upward path that she should have... Monique should low-key have her own talk show. Remember when Monique did Charm School? Yeah. See, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to I bite. always just felt like Monique. If you look at the queen that she is now, she was always fit and meant to be a queen. But I felt like her relationship with the community has just gotten completely... She was black. You got to think about it. When you get blackballed... Yeah. And she's not the only celebrity that's been blackballed. There's a lot of celebrities that's been blackballed. She's just a good example to use. Yeah. Because like you said, she had a prime where she was popping. Right. But there are certain industry ties that once you break ties. Now, look, Oprah don't fuck with you. Tyler Perry came out. Yeah, 50 said he talked to Tyler Perry. And Tyler said, I don't have an issue with Monique XYZ. Cool. Politically All correct, right. Tyler. Um, you but, don't have an issue with her, but you also don't give a fuck about her. Yeah, you don't have an issue. This is what I don't like what people do. People are trying to say, I don't care what's so, whatever. I don't care anymore. I don't care. Yeah, you don't care, but guess what? You still don't give a fuck. And you don't give a fuck enough that you fuck them over, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not that you're not bothered. You literally do not give a fuck about that person at all. So don't try to act like it. Right. Wait, my bad. No, nah, you're right. And that's the thing. Yeah. Once she lost industry ties with them, Lee Daniels had to say what he had to say about her. And I'm not going to say she's all the way innocent. She definitely might have been a, you know, she might have played a role in some of it. Because everything is chess. The game is chess. The game is chess. It, and, and that's the thing. The, the moves you make can either help you or really hurt you. Right. And so I think looking back, she might do some things different. I also think she was kind of dealt an unfair reputation off of one series of events. Because post-Precious, that's what... Precious is what led to this whole shit. Right. But with... Jared Leto and some of these other people, they're allowed to be uh, method actors and have their process, but we want to paint Monique as an asshole. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. She had to play. You these- got people like, what's the dude's name? Uh, that's an asshole on set. Christian Bale. <clears throat> uh, Christian Bale's an asshole. Motherfucking dude from Fight Club. He's the biggest asshole of all. Not no- Brad. Not Nolan, but Nolan. Not no- uh, I don't. I forget his fucking name. His name is, um, damn, he's a legend. Edward Norton. Edward Norton, that's it. Biggest asshole ever, but it's just a part of his. It's a part of it. They understand that that's a part of the process. Yeah. Right. And so I felt like she was kind of, I don't know, I felt like it was unfair. But, and then y'all went on to work with Tasha Smith, who was exactly the same. But y'all gave her the benefit of being a method actor and being an asshole. So it's just a lot of things that you could peel back. And it's like I said, this is somebody, Monique, who had fame before Tyler Perry. Like before... Not before Oprah, but like, no, nah, for sure. She's a lot more respected and probably didn't look at them like, oh, I'm so thankful to be around y'all. This is all I wanted to say. Um, 50 Cent is the absolute perfect person to come into her life at this very moment. I don't know his relationship with stars, but if 50 can put her in a power universe in any type of way, good for 50 and good for her. 
Because nah, I feel real. like her work. That's exactly what I thought. Unfortunately, her work at this age is going to have to start speaking for her. And now not her story. Now there's been so many years in between what happened. Yep. I felt like your work has to speak for it. Because I don't know if you want to pivot the convo to this, but the re- one of the biggest reasons why I bring this up is look at that role in, in Precious, right? When you look at the community, and this is the reason why, I, why these films are beneficial to us, but it's, that, it's the trauma aspect that we talk about. Because look at Monique. She won an Oscar for that role. And if you look at her performance, the scene where she's crying, at the she end, just with Mariah did, Carey? Yeah, the scene where she's crying at the end with Mariah Carey, or even just the scenes where she's yelling and saying all of that shit. Bro, that movie is very hard to watch because of her performance alone. Did you just recently watch it, or? I did my research. I've seen it more than once. Oh, okay. That movie is hard as fuck to watch, and all I'm going to say is <clears throat> her performance isn't even respected. The same way Lupita's performance in 12 Years a Slave is not respected, I don't think. And I can guarantee you right now, Lupita feels like she don't get the calls that she should get because they don't respect your performance when you do things that they believe that you came from. When they think that you are just easily able to get back there. Think about it. All Monique really did was treat her daughter like shit and wasn't impactful. Yeah. Did she win the Oscar that year? Yeah, because that made me feel the most chills. But when they go and do their next movie, they don't think about Monique. They don't think, who won the Oscar last year? Maybe we should get her for this next movie. That's they don't true. think that. It's the same for Lupita. It's the same for Lupita. And I say it's the mass trauma effect. Like, it's the fact that they don't, they don't even identify Monique as an actress. You can see how deep I look at it. They did not look at Lupita... Nyong'o as Lupita when she won that Oscar. They was looking at her like she was Patsy from 12 Years a Slave. They looked at at they looked at Monique like she was the mom from Precious in real life sitting down there. And we really gonna give her because let me tell you they don't detach it doesn't detach as oh she was acting. They felt like you went through an experience like, oh, you, were, you, you played Patsy. You actually went through that. Man, that must have been tough. Wow, that must have been tough. You see, but they're not talking to you like you was an actor who played a role. Mm-hmm. They talking to you like you really went through that shit. That's a fact. That movie impacted me Sam- so much. Oh, my God. Samuel Jackson was just talking about how black folks only get awards for certain. And Monique is a product of it. And she's 100% a product of that. Mm-hmm. It was the same thing with Denzel. I mean, you only win when you really despicable. When you really play a piece of shit, that's when we win. Black person will never win for Manchester by the sea. Yeah, we won't. You won't win for just being a down on his luck guy. They, you want to get nominated. This nigga obviously haven't seen Green Grand. Green, what is it called? Green Book. Oh yeah, well, he played a look. He played a a, a a slave driver or whatever he played. My bad job, but yeah, just to wrap that up, that was just one, something mm-hmm. I wanted to bring up. I just felt like we give flowers to the, the great people in the world. I mean, I feel like every time we see Monique, it's like. Negative, I just wanted to bring some light to For sure. That. Much needed flowers for her. I think so. My boy Deshaun Watson is a free man, sir. Um, I always say the accusation is always louder than the acquittal. Uh, when he came under fire for this, he thought it was ridiculous. And he said, I'm ready to move forward with whatever legal action to defend myself. Me and my team are ready. And we want to do it. We invite it. Mm-hmm. We're not going to deny. I mean, we're not going to. We're not going to take any type of, nah, we're saying, we're, we're saying that this is bullshit and we're running forward with it, me and my team. And they were successful. Mm-hmm. And so, like the acquittal is always, and I'm not even saying acquittal because they decided not to, they didn't even have enough to indict him. Yeah. So, we, he's good. Now, it's, oh yeah, all of these teams are interested in Deshaun Watson, I guess. But it just goes to show, that's the, that was my only thing. I'm just happy for him. The, the accusation is always louder than an acquittal. Chris Brown just went through that girl. As mm-hmm. soon as Chris Brown announced the iffy track, she says he raped her. He raped her, right? Of course we can't say that she's lying, of course. It was just weird because it's like, damn, every time Chris put out music, somebody come forward with this. The last right. one last one got debunked. This time, he put out a uh 
he had to go through all types of data recovery to get the voice message from the chick where she's like trying to, she basically telling him on a, on a voice note that she trying to, you know, get it again from him and he was the best she ever had, whatever. It just, and then look, Chris Brown was like, I need apologies from all of y'all. Yeah. Because, but that's the thing. The, the accusation is always loud in acquittal. So shout out to D Deshaun Watson. I was hoping that we would get him or Russ or Rogers. I know y'all wanted something other than what y'all got. Washington fans, we spent all of that time talking about Russell Wilson all, all, all beginning of this offseason. All beginning of this offseason talking about Watson. And we got wins. Wilson, Watson, Wilson, Watson, Wilson, Watson. All of these articles, and then we ended up with Wentz. And then y'all trying to make it seem like he about to be legit and go back to a 2017 form, whatever. Anyway, Deshaun, John, uh, De Deshaun Watson. Watson, I want him to win so bad. Only, if, only because I feel like I never once felt like he was up to some bullshit. I never once felt like it. And, I'm, and I told myself, they're they going to have to find him guilty. I'm going to have to see some... Some shit that looks like bullshit. But every time I look into his case, I just kind of feel like, all right, I can't be the one to, you know? Mm -hmm. Not for this. Because I'm not really hearing nothing too crazy that's come out of it. You know what I mean? So the fact that he was eventually found not guilty by an actual jury, like... I, no, he wasn't for, for indicted. The, for the... Not not guilty, but like... They decide... Oh, yeah, they, for them to decide not to even... yeah. Damn, so he wasn't... It I didn't thought, even get to that, no. Damn, I thought he was found, like, acquitted or something. Like, like, like told, like, nah. So no they just indictment. dropped the charges? Yeah. Damn. No indictment. I feel like it was some bullshit anyway. And I'm not afraid to say that. I don't think that he didn't do anything. He might not have did anything that was... I don't know what he did. However, you're right. We got well, too many a, situations where motherfuckers be lying... Dude got out of the jail. I just seen that article. Dude got out of the jail. 15 years, the lady said, oh, I'm so sorry. Fucking I'm so sorry for 15 years of my life? I mean, they'll call you an a conspiracy theorist if you say it, but until none of this shit happened until he went out of Houston. Until he won the dip. When he went out of Houston, all of a sudden, all this shit happened. And I don't believe in coincidences. So you call me a conspiracy theorist if you want. I just do not believe it was a coincidence that all of a sudden this happened. And... um. I guess we can stay on football for a minute because Deshaun's free. Tom Brady comes back. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Deshaun Watson's uh, agent. I fuck with him. David Muleta, yeah. fuck with him. He's I a beast. fuck with him. He's a beast. Yep. That's also Micah Parsons. Uh, oh, Muleta's I can go down the line. You know what I'm saying? Jalen Ramsey. He has Super Bowlers on his. Yeah, trust me. Look, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brady is back, man. And uh, Rain Man's back. I hate that. I hate that Brady is back. I didn't really get to. I didn't really want to say on Twitter and sound like I mm -hmm. hate it, but I'll do it on the podcast. But I hate that he's back. Why? I just want you to just go away. Now I gotta listen to Skip and them talk about you for the next That's year. Watched. That's because he watched Skip. You right? It's just a no, and it's not even just Skip. Everybody. Would you feel that way about Braun coming back? No. So fuck out of here because he's if Braun retires, think about it, Terrence, and then comes back. You know, Braun, my god, though. I love Bron. Bron's a fair player. I'm not a basketball dude. I just love Bron. So that will be different for me because I'm I'm a Bron fan. This is me hating on Brady. Like Brady okay. is the goat. Yeah. Brady is the greatest football player to me. Or I even argue athlete for him when he retired with seven rings. But I'm just I, I was so ready for the league without you. I was so ready. Yeah. And here you got to come back. I think it was dope though that he said fuck it. I'm going back. As a, I just hate that I hate it for the fact that I have to now think about us playing him or we got to worry about this motherfucker. Yes, man. man. As a person who is a fan of a team in the NFC, it was like, oh, yeah, this is dope. The GOAT's coming back. But it's like, damn. So damn. now we got to deal with the fucking Buccaneers who are going to be. I feel like any team that Tom Brady's on, it doesn't matter if they go 10 and 6, 9. Mm -hmm. if, he, if he makes it to the playoffs, they have a fucking chance. So y'all just saw that. He almost snuck away with another one, it seemed like. I'm glad that he came back, though. It was good news. I like the Okie Doke, too, because a lot of people were saying him retiring kind of let him see how people was going, what people was really going to say about him, who was really going to yeah. support it and who really wasn't, and now I'm coming back. So All when I really messages. retire, 
Yeah, you all know? the messages, all the thank yous, all the posts from NFL. They were nothing. talking about the dude who bought the last game ball or some shit for thousands of dollars, and now it's not the last game ball. You're sick as shit. How that does it feel sucks. to have the the last game ball from the one where he retired, but then he didn't retire because he came back? Yeah, no. Nah, and you wanted. spent half a million dollars on it. Damn, you might as well just sell it for two fifty and just get, just take it as an L. Sell it for two fifty, take it as an L. Yeah, just get it right back. Just try to get that shit right back. And other free agency news, though. You got Amari Cooper going to Cleveland. That's a big move. Oh, you got I think Amari Cooper is number one in the Cowboys fans. Y'all are just smoking dope. I honestly, uh, this is the one thing that I agree with, Skip. Y'all smoking dope. Amari Cooper be disappearing, dog, when it matter. Y'all see. And I think the Cowboys know that, and they said, we going with Gallup, and we going with CD. And guess who's a fucking bum? Gallup. Cowboys fans. Guess Chad, what? You can't call him. you can't call him a bum. Y'all know. Y'all know. Gallup has not been a dog forever. Let me tell you, he's not a bum. But do y'all think Gallup deserved five years, 75 million? I don't think so. I don't think so. Y'all mean to tell me that we got to listen to y'all say that Michael Gallup is better than Amari Cooper? Some of the Cowboys fans saying? But we just had to sit through the whole last couple seasons of y'all telling us that Terry's not better than no receiver on our team because of a Michael Coo- because of a Amari Cooper. We was told that Amari Cooper was y'all best receiver for the last three years. Now all of a sudden y'all release him and all of these Cowboys fans are saying, yeah, yeah, well, you know, he wasn't elite. Any, you know, he was, hold up. Y'all told us he was better than Terry, though. Terry's officially the best receiver in the NFC East now. Period. I'm going to let you get that off. It's been, go to the next, the next one. <laughs> God, Why are damn. you rushing so much? It's only a, we, only, we don't got that many topics. I'm not rushing. We are only an hour in. I'm not rushing. But do you know how many free agent signings there was? I was talking about only I only had these the, the bigger joints. Khalil Mack and JC Jackson to the Chargers defense is huge. Ridiculous. Y'all getting Randy Gregory out of nowhere? What? Come on, man. We building a dynasty. We got DJ Jones too, uh, from the 49ers. Um, what you don't have on there is Vaughn just went to the fucking Bills I don't five years. That. Marcus Williams and Morgan Moses to the Ravens. Those are big signings for B more. Chandler Jones went to the Raiders. Honestly, this is my favorite time of the offseason. When all the pieces It's are like when you play Madden and you do a um a fantasy draft. A fantasy draft. Yeah. And everybody go different places. You look gutter days of a Mike childhood. Mike Vick is on the Browns and you getting dogs. You like, how is he catching that? Yeah. Oh, he got Randy Moss. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. this is my favorite time of the year um of the offseason. And honestly, we going to the motherfucking Super Bowl. I don't care what nobody say. Big country. We going to the Super Bowl. Hey, look, real ones know when you do that fantasy draft on Madden, you just pick your quarterback, running back, couple receivers, and then you just simulate, simulate the rest. The rest. <laughs> I don't give a fuck who I get on defense. Who the fuck they got my D line? Your D line trash. Everybody trash. You like damn. You know what I was going to ask you? This is random. Do you know what RSVP means? Um, it's reserve, very special. Sp- um, no RSVP. Yeah. <laughs> Reserve something. Is it like reserve valuable person? Something like that? Because the RS is one and then the VP is something person, right? So basically. I don't know what the fuck it stands for. Reserve <laughs> spot. RSP, RSVP. I don't know. And I just looked this up because my aunt had sent this, uh, this flyer for my uncle's party that's coming up. And I had to go back and see the time. So when I went back and looked at it, it said, please RSVP. And I said, you know what? I've seen RSVP since I was a kid. And in 27 years, I'm not even going to lie to y'all, I, do, I did not know what the fuck that meant. I know what it, it means, mean, but I don't know what it reserve spot for, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. like, what does it mean? So basically what it really means is please reply in French. It really means, it's short for the phrase, respondez s'il vas plate. Wow. Something like that. You I can't say it. I'm sorry. Day. Let me, I'm about to put, I'm about to get Siri to say it for, for y'all. Oh, but it's shortened. I always knew what the action was. Go on the page in RSVP. Hit the I'm going. It's like, it's like saying how you're going. Motherfuckers. And it's like, I, I mean, I, want, I wish you would say it. Damn, it really doesn't. I don't know. All I'm going to say is what it really means is to please respond. You know why, though? Because normally, 
Yes, and I said, "Damn, this shit's starting to make sense. This adult and shit." <laughs> that's that, that's the that what you we just learning. <laughs> so if y'all don't know, see Terrell trying to act like he know, but you I know knew what? That. Terrell is one of these dudes. I didn't know what RSVP really meant the word, but I knew what the action was was the purpose of it was. I just didn't know what the word meant. You're the idiot, not me. You're nah, tinky, but Terrell, he can get winky this off, and I don't know because he know what I don't tinky, know. Tinky winky ass nigga. I am. Who do you look like? Dipsy was the smartest Teletubby. You look like, you the, sun was sky, you look like the sun that was up there. We didn't even never see you except at the beginning of the episode. Okay, boy, you look like, the, you look like the vacuum, boy. <laughs> Remember they used to have the little pancakes? It was like, what were they even eating? What are they even? They used to eat the pink. Uh, what were they? I don't fucking know. <laughs> the weirdest yeah, fucking yeah, show yeah, we watched. Show ever? People don't understand how Dragon Tales is a legend. Is a legendary show. Troy, we got to get into that. But they was high. All right, we're not getting, we not, we, we definitely They was getting that. high on crack rock and they were literally hallucinating. And they were seeing dragons, but really it was just, think about it. I wish, I wish with all my heart to fly with dragons. Oh my God. You Come on, say, bro. I wish, I wish to go and play soccer. Nah, Terrence, they said and they wanted to fly with dragons. It means fly with high? dragons in a land apart. These motherfuckers was getting zooted. You're they right. was getting so hot. They, they, they seen a dragon. With, they was getting so hot. They seen a dragon with two heads. Let's I'm telling you. The dude for Blue's Clues, too. Chalk Zone. All right. All right. Chalk all right, Zone. All right. I'm, hey, this is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Because that's ridiculous. And honestly, Chalk Zone was a dope-ass show. It was. That show sounds like when I just got off of school, Nickelodeon. I used to love that show. They could, If he had the chalk, he could draw anything and get himself out of anything. Whatever. Y'all don't see the adult adult metaphor. See what one one line of chalk will take you to a different world. All right. All I'm saying is, y'all, RSVP basically means, if you didn't know, to please res respond whether you're going to come or not because we're trying to get a head count. So, huh. so Terrence just figured that out. Even all the rest of us knew. Nah, because let me tell y'all, we got a lot of people that listen to this podcast that are young, and I guarantee you they did not know what RSVP really meant. I guarantee they thought it stood for something like how you did. All right, bet. So, Terrence, do you have RSVP? No. But that's what I'm telling y'all. Now that I know what RSVP means, I will now do so because, Terrell, you knew that it meant to respond for head count. I literally just figured that out this morning. I don't RSVP because I don't know if I'm going or not. Well, that's my thing. Now that I know that that's what RSVP means, I don't think people should put RSVP. People should put, let me know if you coming, instead of RSVP is short for Responde is la saint. It's like, what? The Facebook, it's out of habit, and it's shorter. People don't like to type all them words. And, and then, look, the Facebook joint now, <laughs> just RSVP. you can put going, not going, maybe. Yeah, see? That's if you, if you respond to the event. So do that. <laughs> um, Jesse Smollett, y'all know he was on, he, he put a noose around his neck and said that, that two these two men said that they was gonna kill him, called him the F word, all types of shit. They figured out that his ass was lying. Yeah. So he goes to court. Now he's on trial because his ass is going to jail for lying. He's gonna do five months. And this is the thing. I just don't like the all of a sudden now you crying black. I just don't like it. It's like you just use whatever mm -hmm. like I'm a black man. I'm being This motherfucker is in the courtroom with a fist up. Saying, look, if something happens to me, I didn't kill myself, I'm not suicidal. I get that, but it's just very convenient of you. So now you're taking this, now you're taking this stance. Because black folks looked at that whole situation way different. It was like this had nothing to people do. People came out of support. But all of us that think like Dave Chappelle. Remember Dave Chappelle was like, this nigga was clearly lying. Yeah. It's because we did feel like that. And it's my thing. You tried to, you tried to extort the, um, the LGBTQ com community because there's people that's really going through shit. You making this fake situation and then them debunking it just makes way for them to try and debunk somebody who might really be going through some bullshit. That's true. Now, all of a sudden, you in court throwing up your black power fist. And it's now all you crying black. Now you want black folks to come to your support and what? Get you out of this five months? Hell no. Take your ass and sit down. It just felt like a big... The, the whole trial shit felt like an episode of Empire. It really did. It did. I was about to say, he looked like they filming an episode it, of Empire. Uh-huh. I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm really not a fan of Jesse. I yeah. just feel like he's an opportunist clown. 
Is that a is that a uh, black one convenient type thing? One hundred percent. Because yeah. now that you in the court system, now you now you to, a black man. Now you not on about. Now it's not LGBT. Now now it's, it's black. It's like you. Just, Why you not saying all the LGBT not, shit? No, nah, because that's the thing. That didn't work for you because you already lied. They're not about to stand behind you after you lied. You just oh, okay, it's like yeah, he's right. just trying to pick whatever he could. And look, this is the thing. You are a black dude. It's we, like we know that, but you don't get no you you respect. And my thing is, you are a black dude. They definitely judging you like they definitely looking at you like a black dude. They definitely about to do you dirty for they this. They didn't. He got five months or whatever you think. You know what I'm saying? There, if you think that I'm a black man, they doing me dirty. Look what you did. <laughs> what did you do? Well, I tried to set it up and have myself. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. It's you're terrible. lucky that you only got five months because I felt like if I do some shit like that, I wasn't an empire. I ain't got the money to, to pay the best lawyer. I'm going to have the nigga from up the street, public <laughs> defender. He's the best in the county. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and yeah, I might do four years for some <laughs> shit like that. Seven years for some shit. He's no getting bullshit. five months. Five and you months. about to be in the Leonardo DiCaprio with Wall Street seats? Nah, you good. You still be able to look at all the games. Right, play ping pong. You be all right. Yeah, you'll be straight. They ain't about to put your ass in gin pop. I don't think anything's going to happen to you. But look. We're not going to play with him. I hope nothing happens to him in there. For sure. I hope, hopefully you can figure everything out and get your second shot, your second win. That's what I'm about now. You know what I mean? Like, look. I respect it. I mean, because that's how I felt with Monique. Maybe she did kind of have a certain way about her, but I felt like. Nah, for real. Almost like how you said, where certain people have little episodes and they get work. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was the D.L. Hughley situation with Kanye. I don't know if you wanted to bring any light to that. No, nah, we can talk about it. And I think everybody's exhausted. On talking about Ye. Right. So this would be mainly about but, DL for me and not but, Kanye. But this week of just the Kanye and Pete shit is just almost like unavoidable. Yeah. So that's why it's kind of like, damn, here we go talking about Kanye again. Um, but Kanye was going crazy on Instagram, of course, posting it, doing his shit. Um, I don't like that. I don't like what you're doing or what we do. That is the that is us being a part of the media right there. Nah, I get it. But Kanye was Kanye was posting some wild shit. I don't agree with DL Hughley. I was gonna get there. Con, I, you know what? You're right. I just changed my verbiage. What Kanye was Kanye was posting a, that was wild? The fact that he said he didn't want his daughter on TikTok? Nah, Terrence. People gotta stop saying that the fact that he's just posting his stuff publicly. Look how you said Kanye going crazy. That's what the media is doing to my man. That's the wrong verbiage because I just got an argument about it the other day. This man fighting for his kid. I'm not saying I he's see. crazy, but he, he. I was saying he was. I meant. It, I meant it in a he going wild. Oh, okay. I just yeah, shouldn't yeah, have used yeah, crazy. I got you. I got you. I just shouldn't have used the crazy because you're right. That is what people do. They just try to make him crazy, and some of it is a little unhinged for yeah. sure. Where he's just posting, posting, posting. But uh, DL Hughley did an interview with Vlad TV where he was talking about Kanye and. It's embarrassing. It's harassment. It's this and that. And mm -hmm. Kanye responded with with pictures and shit, and was going. It was basically talking about DL Hughley. He had he dis, he he said one of the biggest, he, one of the best threats touched. ever. Yeah, one of the best to me, best threats ever. Which I can was, afford to hurt you. I can afford to hurt you. Yeah, that's what he said. And did you want to talk? I wanted to tell. I was telling people this. A lot of people saw that and said. Kanye's going to pay to kill D.L. Hughley. Come on, y'all. It's just crazy how when you're looked at as crazy, everything that you, get, that you say gets taken to the deepest, fullest extent. Do you remember? I remember my little cousin, right? Love him to death. I remember my little cousin said some, I hope this isn't offensive. <laughs> he said some gay shit when we was young, remember? Is that offensive to say he said some gay shit? And, or now... Sorry, he I'm, said something. He said something about was, what? Okay, what did he say? <laughs> what did he say, Terrell? I'm not gonna put him out there, but what did he say? Uh, nah, we was messing with. We him. was messing with. Him. We we tricked him. though. Mike Beasley. This is how old we are. We were young. We said if you had to, Mike Beasley got uh just drafted by the Chicago Bulls. Yep. And Dane for some reason was all of a sudden this big Mike Beasley fan. And we said Dame I tricked him. Up. I'm not gonna lie. I was fucked up because I remember what I up. said. We was, I said it if was you, this little cousin thing when you said if you had I to, said if you had to if you had to be with a man who would it be if you I had to he, be with a man who would it be I don't know why I asked him that my it was little cousin up. was young didn't have no 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 man it was in fucked him. up if this yeah. was honest it was fucked up for me that it was fucked up for me to say that but it, he said Mike Beasley or Chris Brown or something we just get we teased him we, about look, it look but this what this what it sent my cousin on 
my cousin would look at every single thing that we would say. Terrell <laughs> said, Terrell used to say something. I'm about to get a cup. I'm about to, I'm about to use this cup because this cup is bigger. And my little cousin would be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> he said, and like we used to be like, yo, you reaching. That to me is the world with Kanye West. I feel like Kanye West says, I can afford to hurt you. We, y'all, the world sees it as, I can afford to pay a hitman to come and kill you. Yeah, but I t- see it. Go ahead. And then I'll respond. I see it as that and others. Like, I see it as like, I could pay to get you fired. I could pay to, you know what I'm saying? I can pay to get dirt on you and then get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't think he meant I could pay to kill you. I thought he meant I could really hurt you and put you in a bad position with the money I got. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see it as like a death threat. But you also can't take shit like that lightly. That's true. That's true. I'm just saying it's crazy how that was like, he has enough money where he could get you killed. Jay-Z said, send an order through a hand speed. Kill you in 24 hours or shorter. You can't ignore the hand speed. And nobody's out here saying, wow, Jay-Z is... He wasn't talking to D.L. Hughley directly. He was just rapping on a song. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I honestly, though, I would respond in that same way. I get and it. I don't give a damn if you think that it means that I might kill you. To me, it's like, I can afford to hurt you. You take me to court, that's not a death threat. It's not. You cannot prove that that is a death threat. It's just all. It's just a threat that you want. It's wanna, actually true. I can actually financially I afford, it, yeah, to hurt you. I took it it's as a threat, the, but it's not a death threat. Yeah, I took it as the Walter White. If you do know who I am, then you, your best course would be to tread lightly. Mm-hmm. Which, but honestly, I mean, this is what I think, and this I think me and Terrence agreed. DL Hughley, if you can get up there and talk shit about Kanye, he's gonna snap back at you. But this is the thing: DL Hughley is also a comedian. He was saying some funny ass shit back to Kanye. I personally think that DL should mind his business. I don't think that any man should be out there speaking on another man's situation the way DL Hughley was. You know what I mean? Even if I know we talk about protecting the women in our friends' lives through our friends. You know what I mean? Yep. And if you're not my friend and you're not willing to talk to me on a friend level, you definitely can't be out here on a public interview. You're D.L. Hughley. You don't got a movie coming out. You don't got a stand-up coming out, a show or nothing. You're doing an interview with Vlad. With this bum-ass nigga talking about me. Not bum-ass, because whatever. What up, Vlad? Whatever. Fuck Vlad. Well, yeah, whatever. I will never need him. Anyway, you up there with him. But, you know, it's not. You know, you just, I don't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But you up there with him talking about me. And my lady and how I'm handling it, I'm definitely going to say, yo, and I'm rich. It's time for me to start acting like it. I feel like, yo, DL, like, you up there talking about, yeah, this, this is abuse, this is this, this is that. It's like, you talking about what you see, just like everybody else. But I think Kanye was right when he said DL was a pawn. You just another black. You're like the black dude coming in to tell the other slaves and the other, other black people, like, hey, y'all niggas need to shut the fuck up before they come back out here. That's their way of getting you to shut him up so I don't have to. Not, not to take it there, but to me, that is kind of how I see it. Like, yo, we have our opinions on it, but it's like, all right, DL. What I didn't like is DL Hughley is online talking about, did you see his response? Where he said, I guess if I'm, he responded, his response made me not like what he said even more. Because he responded and started saying, team DL. Hashtag Team DL. He puts it on all his posts. Every I post. don't give a damn. What is this about? Did you, oh, so did you come out and talk about me just for publicity? He was like, if you're going to threaten my life, then you got to do something. And then he was like, Team DL. And then I said something, something else. He said something else. And then he said Team DL. And I'm like, Team DL? Like, it's like, if it were me, I'd be looking at you like, oh, you were looking for a spotlight, like for an opportunity. Because now what you want other people to say Oh, yeah, I'm Team DL. I'm Team DL. Like, yo, I don't give a fuck what y'all think. I'm, yeah. trying, I'm trying to do me. And I don't like how he came for his... Uh, only thing I didn't like about the DL situation, because I thought DL said some funny shit, I don't like how he came for his mental health that way, the way he did. He was talking about maybe you need to, you know, use people in your head and you crazy, basically feeding into the he's crazy thing. Yeah. Because it's like you poke this man first. 
Nobody asked you for your opinion. Nobody on asked DL Hughley for his opinion Look, on anything. Nobody asked you for your opinion. This motherfucker clap back at you, and now you're attacking his mental health even more, driving the Kanye has done crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like in terms of like just on some Instagram shit. We don't know both sides. And I always me and my girl was arguing about this shit the other night because I don't put I don't make Kim just this victim that a lot of people do. Like, we don't know what's going on in their marriage. Yeah, I don't speak on either I, one like a why, victim. Yeah. I don't say, nah, she wrong too. But what I, my take is, well, we don't know everything. So right. I'm not going to say. Because that is the case. Also, I've been in situations, I've been in hella relationships where the girl gets to social media first. Mm. And now she's driven a different narrative. Right. And now I got to, the completely innocent party, got to try and recorrect some shit. And if you look at the 2013 Breakfast Club interview with Kanye... Kanye literally would be talking about, he said, me and Kim, we working on our, he, he was like, if, he literally say something like, if Kim, he said, if me and Kim separate, then everybody's going to look at Kim as this way, and they're going to look at me this way. And he literally said something like that, and it's like, he didn't even know low-key that it, that would eventually, he was right. I mean, Kim being a mom, you're going to get the media on your side for sure. And she's so fucking decorated into this shit. And you're just... She know what she's do doing. This. She's playing the game the she's right way, left believe it or not. plenty of niggas before him. You know what I'm saying? Right. Left plenty marriages. She's playing the game right. Keeping herself clean in the media I would for sure. See, I would see it more as abuse if she wasn't moved on in, in a new relationship. Well, now that you say that... You know? The fact that she's she has a new man, it's something about that... That makes me feel like, all right, I don't know what either of y'all are doing. You know? They yeah, both moved on. It ain't about it no more. Now it's all yeah. parents. Y'all both look like y'all are just kind of moved on and kind of like unhappy with each other. And then like, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's public, but How I'm not about, about to get them? up here and be D.L. Hughley, who has a past of his own when it comes to, like, we're not going to say D.L. is guilty of anything. I don't know. But D.L., you're really not the person. I'm not even going to bring it up. But you're really just not that person who should be talking about abuse. Or talking about somebody and how they should treat their wife. And how you feel about the Pete text? The Pete text, I told Terrell, I thought the Pete Davidson text was fake. It looked, like like a fan, it looked like a fan made them text. We could all, I told Terrell, well, I didn't tell him yet. We could all, I could have wrote them text. It looked like the most predictable, the one where he said, I'm in bed with your wife and then sent a picture of, of him or something like that. It just looked like, they were saying that on the TL before that even happened. So it looked like y'all either did it because you saw on the TL. I'm just not believing it, bro. Terrence think this whole shit is fake. I think it's, I think, I didn't think those texts were real. Did Pete come out and confirm? They say his manager or one of his, somebody in his camp put them joints out. Because why would they put those out? To try to this. save? I don't know. I mean, the dude's uh, been quiet this whole time. This nigga Kanye cut his head off, whatever. I just think, I don't think Pete, I don't think Pete should be saying anything about Kim being a mom to the father. I will never be on the side of it. I don't even have kids. But I'm with the party of, I'm with the side of the room that didn't like that. Like, don't try, don't tell me, oh, Kim's the greatest mom I've ever seen. Oh, whatever. Fuck that. All right, cool. You think I don't know? Right. I have four kids by this woman. So what are we really talking about? And then I also like, don't like the, don't, don't try to, don't try to bro me. Don't try to talk to me like bros, like, bro. I can, I've been there where you are, or we can talk. Nah, we passed that. Nah. I, it, we, it's past that. It's definitely past that. And, and that's two, I, you're not going to sit there and say you in bed with my wife and then try to respond and be giving me advice and shit? Nah, it's nothing but straight blatant smoke now. Now it's nothing but straight blatant smoke. This is what I told y'all. Until you've been in Kanye West's position, you really can't judge his reaction. Until you've really been in this position where you got this woman who... In your mind, is trying to make you look crazy. But then she has a man in her life that literally does make you want to go crazy. That make you want to act crazy <laughs> for a little second because of him. And that's the mother of you the four of children. Right. And now you're battling chill and amp. You battling. It's almost like you off a of four loco all day. Like you just on a. You know I've been through this. Bro, yes. You're on chill or amp between. And let me tell you, that is a dangerous mental state. I went through this in 2014, y'all. I went through this in 2014. Yeah. Where you're dealing with a woman who I will I will tell y'all straight up. In 2014, I was cheated on. And she ran to the TL and made me look crazy. Yep. 
to justify what she did. You know what I'm saying? Jalai. Yeah. And I hated that nigga for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Honestly, that was when we was when we was young. Like me and that person have already had a conversation about it at a wedding. Literally three years after that, we everything's cool. There's no beef. But I've literally had. That's why. That is why. Me and my girl was arguing about this shit. Yeah. Because she was trying to make it seem like I'm like trying to make it seem like Kanye not crazy. Like we don't have evidence. And, and it's yeah, like, we have evidence of him wilding on some tweets and and saying some crazy stuff. The him talking about Kim wanted to abort North and just saying that shit out loud, running mm -hmm. for the MAGA shit. We have seen Kanye do some crazy ass shit, but I've also been in a situation where the truth ain't really out, but there's a narrative and you're not only fighting a narrative, but now you got this other guy who's in their life. Right. And it supports, and look, your reaction to him supports this narrative they've built. And it's almost like the way that it's constructed is so that you cannot get upset because if you get upset, you crazy. But they know that what they're doing with the new dude is going to get you upset. And, and then this like, is the thing. They know what they're doing. Yes. They'll tell, look, you go out with the nigga with the jacket I bought you. You know that's about to amp me up. I, I was standing with you and told you try that jacket on. It's little shit like that. Uh -huh. You Kim K, you can wear whatever you want, but you want to go out with the nigga with no jacket I got on. Kanye came out and said, I don't want my daughter. I don't want Hulu. Disney or anybody else to take advantage of my daughter. And people were like, what is he talking about? Hulu. And then guess what come out the next day? Kardashian's trailer. Kardashian's North and on TikTok in the trailer. He know what he talking he about. Knows. I was saying Kanye sometimes just think on a different level. What I wanted to say before the conversation went completely away from what we were talking about was with the Pete situation. Yeah. That's the thing. I understand Kanye's anger towards Pete. I think in my mature age that I'm at now, I would play it different if it was me. But I've also been there before. Mm -hmm. Where you and your girl, who you was in love with, I told you I went to this in 2014. Imagine you get cheated on, right? She with the dude she cheated on you with. And she telling everybody, I had to leave this nigga because he was crazy. He was so crazy. Yeah, was I driving me insane. Look. Then the nigga she cheated on you with chime Try. in, chime in and say you was acting crazy. You was, you was, you was that shit will send you in a, that shit will send you in a rage, bro. So I I completely understand it because I've been there. Terrence, yeah. the, let me tell you something about Terrence and me. Every time we go on this podcast and something come up, who's been there? Me. I've been there. I've been right there with him. The girl that did my man. The girl that... Nah, nah, I'm talking about going through all these situations. People always say, damn, Terrell always been through some shit. And I have. Terrell, oh, Terrell have been through a lot of little, little situations. He don't realize I was right there, though. I was right there. And I'm... I really... I'm, I, my, I, like, I always been Frank and my man always been Leon. I, I mean... Go back in there and beat the fuck out that nigga. Real shit, though. <laughs> I like that. Even though Leon kind of... look. They did my man. See, Leon now should he, be. Now a, he trying to be a Black Panther. <laughs> Leon should be right there with Frank. And still, we got Veronique, and she getting ready to get a personal equity stake. Fuck out of here. Anyway, the girl that did that to Terrell tonight. <laughs> Go ahead. The girl that did that to Terrell, I felt like she would even know, even seeing me now. Like that was that was real sis energy. Terrell, no, that was the first girl that he had that was sis for real. Uh -huh. Like. Real family, my whole family looked at that girl as that was Terrell. Hey, look, y'all have no idea how much I wanted Terrell to be with that girl. So it's crazy how you watch your bro. When you watch your, it's one thing to be hurt. When you watch your family hurt, uh -huh. I'm thinking about the people that seeing Kim and, and Pete that might know Ye like I know you. That might listen to Ye say shit and then Ye, when he talk, they know he can't say it well for the media. But if you sit down and have a conversation, it might take two hours. You would walk away understanding the man's pain. Nah, for sure. And you know that it ain't going to be... My thing with Terrell, when that happened, I watched. I was able to watch and see. And, and there's nothing you can... And I was making mistakes. I was subtweeting. Yeah, I was doing we was shit wrong. I had to, yeah, we was telling niggas People was telling up. me to put my phone down. This girl, uh -huh. this girl was, Terrell, was with Terrell maybe two years. Yeah, it got, even we, were some, we were some kids. Got with a dude love. she was with way before Terrell, and then and then started playing like she was never with Terrell. Her and mm -hmm. the dude that she was with, even to this day, they counting like nine something years or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think hey. it's still together. I think it's still together. And look, nobody Mom. gives a fuck about that girl anymore anyway. But there's two sides to every story. 
There's three sides. But to her too. side is always gonna ha always have people in them seats already. You know what I'm saying? That's it's true. already there's already people waiting for her story to start. You gotta invite people into your screen into your story. Come on, y'all. Bro, I was trying. Come on, y'all. Damn. I was trying to say this shit yesterday. Well, I'm like, they ain't even ready to hear my man. And then look, what's crazy, like I was saying with the Chris Brown shit. Yeah. And the girl that, that came out and said that, it was all open seat to figure out what happened. But then when it comes out to be bullshit, everybody just goes, oh. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. That's why I'm saying, like, especially like going back to the Kanye situation, that's why I always say, I'm not going to come out and cap for the man. I'm just going to say we don't know. Yeah, we, we don't know. know. We, we really don't know. It's, it's toxic. Yes. Is he making some stupid ass decisions? Yeah. I don't support none of that bullshit. But I'm also not going to be the guy to come out like DL and say, yeah, 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 whatever. Because I don't know. Nah, fuck that. DL need to keep his mouth shut on that situation, man. I ain't going to speak on nobody else's situation. I'd rather just unfollow the nigga. Yeah, like they going through their bullshit. It's almost like, look, you see a man arguing with his woman in a supermarket. Do, mm -hmm. you, do you mind your business? Or do you step in and say, hey, man, don't talk to the lady like that. First of all, motherfucker, this is my wife. You don't know who the fuck. It's my wife, yeah. That's the people just need to mind their damn Stop business. trying to be a hero because you don't know people. And, and most older of the time, people. it was, look, and you know, Trey, you know like I know because you work retail. I don't know if you got smacked. Like, I don't know if you got your hands smacked in retail like that before, but I definitely did. Where you working with a couple, they get to going back and forth. And you say something like, I remember this couple was going back and forth on the computer. And I said, hey, y'all, it, it, it's not that big of a deal. Like, like. I think he just trying to, or I was trying to explain what one of them was saying. They both was like, we don't need you to say anything. We don't need you to say shit. Both of them carried the shit out of me. And I said, you know what? And you know Stay what? Stay out of motherfuckers' business. Old motherfuckers that listen to this podcast. If a young couple's arguing, stay your old ass out of their business too. Yeah, that's Just because you older don't mean you can say, oh, I'm older and I'm, I have seniority to say that. No, your old ass will get cursed out and be sitting there looking old and stupid. Right. Sorry. And guess what? We don't, we don't need your old ass advice. You are not dating in 2022 with this social media and this shit we dealing with. We right. stopping taking old advice from these old niggas. All they had to do was walk up with they bum ass <laughs> bell bottoms. These niggas walking up with anything <laughs> on, saying anything above the sun because they haven't, the women y'all was talking to haven't seen shit. You look like a brand new nigga to this chick. No bullshit. And let me, that's what I was going to tell these young people. We in a whole new nation. Taking, I don't think, I think you really just got to take advice from when you, when you see these couples that have been together for like 40 years. Right? Shout out to my parents been together 40 years. But when my dad talked to me about relationship shit, yes. from a marriage standpoint, it's All cool. Right. All right. It's cool. Right. But once we start getting down to that, we just got Instagram 10 years ago. Y'all was together for 30 years. Yeah, you was 20 years in with no oh, idea. Your, your temptation was you go to the supermarket, damn, she got a fat ass. I'm going to get back in my car. Our temptation I got is, temptation before I, I, my, I can't even get away from my temptation to get in the supermarket. I wake up to the temptation. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all got the post notifications on the temptation. Uh-huh. Some of us got OnlyFans. <laughs> just took it there. <laughs> <laughs> took it there. <laughs> Yo, is there, I need some dope. I need. I need a. I don't have anybody on holding fans to follow. So y'all, look, send me names, <laughs> bro. It's gonna be a dark horse profile that <laughs> hop in your DMs. Heard and be you like, were looking. Nah, they are gonna be like, bro, I got you. You know what I'm gonna say? Show me what you got, little Hello, mama. mama. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, um, movies. We just, for the uh, new season three, we're gonna do a movie suggestion of the week. One hundred um, every week. Yes, a suggested sir. movie to watch. You can watch it if you want. You don't have to. And then we'll tell you where you can find it. You want to yep. go first? I'll go first. We started this movie with, I'm sorry, we started this podcast with The Precious, but we wanted to kind of give you like a mental, like a mental bang by using the John Legend uh, track. It was called what? Save Room. Come Save on, Save Room. And I don't know if y'all heard in the beginning of the, the, of the podcast, the audio. If you don't, if you're watching, you're not going to hear it. But... I got that song from a movie called Crazy Stupid Love. I don't know if anybody's ever seen this movie. This is one of the best movies that you can watch to put yourself in just a, I feel like a decent mood as far as your mindset and then like, and as far as dating too. It's a dope, family friendly movie. Literally, I didn't, I put this movie on while I was researching the Monique shit, just randomly had it on because it's a movie that I fuck with. Steve Carell, it's star studded. It's got, uh, what's the other dude's name? Who was in Emma Stone? Is in, uh, who was in Blade Runner? Emma Stone's in it. Uh, damn, what's my man name? Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling, yeah. yeah. Before La La Land. Hey, look, Crazy Stupid Love is a dope ass movie. It's gonna make you feel good. If you're down in the dumps, trust me, you need some good shit to put on. Put 
that on. It's not a black movie. It's not nothing about. You know, I think it's got some black people in it, but like it's it's definitely a a, a, a fun rom com movie. And I said, you know what? The song hit me. So I said, you know, we're gonna go ahead and recommend a movie. It's on Netflix. Netflix should be it should be easy for all of y'all to get. Oh yeah, okay. Right on Netflix. Crazy stupid love. Dope. My movie um is gonna be uh five hundred days of summer. We get the white rom coms for y'all. White rom coms for y'all. Get rid of it. Because let never, me tell you. Yo, you learn some stuff. You're gonna love these movies. You learn some stuff. I only reason why I pick five hundred days of summer is because of, like if you uh if you wanna see like a good relationship story, not even not even like a relationship story, but like some, on some real shit. Like the girl randomly break up with you and y'all trying to figure it out. It's yeah. like a very real story. It's called 500 Days of Summer. His girlfriend named Summer. But it's in the summertime. But it's 500 Days of Summer. But it's also a double line because it's 500 Days of Brightness. Well, 500 Days but, but being like with 500 Summer. Days, but yeah. But 500 Days being with her. And they like go back and forth from the 500. Like it'll be like day, thir- day 392. Then they'll put it back to day 27. Oh, see, I actually kind of fuck with that. Dope as fuck. Great, great ass movie. Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt is in it. That's pretty much it for me. And that gave him his start. Hey, look, speaking of movies, 2009 was a brilliant year for movies. Believe it or not, believe it or not 2009, you know, we repped the nine. That's my, that's my year. Like, my number, year, our number. And I just look back at that year. So if you look at movies of 2009, you got Avatar that came out that year. Inglorious Bastards came out that year. Hangover came out that year. Uh, Precious, believe it or not, started mm-hmm. this podcast, came out that year. 500 Days of Summer, you just said, Terrell. Came out that year. Mm-hmm. Coraline, up. Blindside, uh, Up, Orphan, Up. What's the other joints that came out that year? So many good movies that year, honestly, you, it's, it's hard to even name. Look, you just looking at fantasy and horror. Look, go down and look. Look at the fantasy. You got the Watchmen joint. I think, look, oh, one yeah, of the best shit. movies that all black people love. Look, black people, y'all love this movie. Law Abiding Citizen came out that year. Man, Jamie Foxx. The Butterfly Effect came out that year? Hell no. Butterfly oh, Effect. House on the left, my bad. Butterfly Effect was like 2004. 0403. Classic Ashton Kutcher days. What a classic year. But look, that's dope. Y'all let us know what y'all think about the movie shout out. I'm sorry about the movie uh, the movie recommendations. We're going to try to bring one for y'all every week. Every that should week. not be hard at all. Also, we got the whole lot of red and the dialect mm. yep. uh, reviews up on Patreon. Shout out to the Realist 9 for checking in and checking that out, man. Like 100%. Those two albums. Definitely not what I thought. Shit, my bad. But... You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's dope to Playboy's Cardi's uh, discography is definitely different. Yeah, we definitely it's definitely it was definitely something new. But I'm glad we are all caught up on the Cardi verse. That's what I'm saying. Hey, look, we'll see what's That's about to happen next. Okay, right, now, yeah. right, exactly. That's up on the Patreon right now. Go and check that out. I wish we had some damn football to watch. God damn, we got basketball though. We got Bron tonight. Oh yeah, Kyrie dropped 60 the other night. Man, I'm Legendary. telling you, we should talk more about Kyrie and more basketball, I swear. But look, Kyrie is etching his name in the history books, y'all. What I was going to say, and it's just a dark com- uh, just a dark horse comment, Kyrie Irving is doing what Kyle- Colin Kaepernick wanted to do. For sure. Colin Kaepernick. Ball out. He's Make able a statement. To, Ball he, out. He's able to almost like validate his actions with his good play. And I felt like... As long as Kyrie is balling, he can take any stance he want. People going to want him to play. Right. Colin Kaepernick had a shaky year, then took his stance. People forget he was sitting on the bench when he took a knee. Yeah, for sure. So he it's like, it was easy to say, oh, that motherfucker's not good anyway. Oh, this isn't about race. We don't want him because he's not good. You can't say that about Kyrie. Right, exactly. Y'all peep how Kyrie got the little mini bush? I told Terrell, Kyrie, that's a real black man right there. Yeah, he out there a huge fan I am of Kyrie now. Yeah. More than ever. Yeah. For sure. We need to, I need to get that Kyrie jersey. I can't wait to get my Russell Wilson team captain. Um, damn, what is it? Walter Payton Man, Walter of, the Payton Man of the Year award patch jersey. And I will wear it on the podcast. Number three. Can't wait. If y'all, did y'all see, did y'all see uh, Baby Future, Baby CC, and Win and, and, and Mama Sierra, and Papa Russ at the press conference? Sorry. Baby Future have on a Falcons jersey. Hey, we didn't have Tech Corner. Did we have anything for Tech Corner? We did have some stuff for Tech Corner if you wanted to get into that. It's kind of... Oh, yeah. We'll close out with Tech Corner. We're going to close out with with Tech Corner. Turn up. Hey. (laughs) Tech Corner, we back in the building. You know how we do. HBO Max is merging with uh, another app called Discovery Plus. Mm -hmm. And I'm only bringing that up because if you're like me, you might pay HBO Max the Supreme joint, like the good joint, $14.99. They have an ad-based tier that has ads for $9.99. Oh, they trash. were talking about how Discovery Plus, also an ad, 
base has a, also an ad based tier, and they also have a ad free tier. They said these two companies merging is is probably going to be good for the functionality piece of the app. Like some people don't like the way HBO, HBO Max. Moves. Mac? Yeah. Oh, okay. So they're going to pick up the discovery. Hopefully, they said that with the merge, hopefully the app is going to have better functionality. Oh, okay. However, this could also mean a rise in prices, bro. I don't give a damn. Honestly, I need HBO. That's I will pay twenty five dollars a month for HBO. But Mac. that's what they were saying. But look, damn, you're, you're going to be paying more. For more for the Discovery Plus shit. Oh, because think about it, Discovery's charging like so and so dollars a month, and then this for no ads. It ain't like they can merge. Think about it, if me and you merge, we both gotta get our money. They no said bullshit. that we could be seeing it go from nine ninety nine and fourteen ninety nine to stuff like fifteen ninety nine and twenty two ninety nine. Like, Fuck. It's, it, it, we getting ready to be paying. All I want to bring that up because we might be paying a little bit more for these apps than we think, y'all. $10 a month is fine for Netflix, but now I realize I'm paying $20 a month for Netflix. If I'm about to be have to pay $20 a month for HBO Max, did we really get rid of our cable bill? Instagram is adding moderators that can join what? into a live and actually moderate, which I feel like is actually dope. I mean, I think it's dope if, like, if Terrell goes on IG Live and he just brings me in as a moderator. I can moderate for you as you're alive. I can, you know what I'm saying? Which is very new. But that is brand new that they're bringing. And I, I felt like that's going to work. Is it going to be like the Twitter Spaces thing? Where it's very close to Twitter Spaces and Clubhouse where there's moderators, people who are in there and they're a part of the live. You don't hear them, but they can come in and out and be like, all right. Oh, okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That'll be dope. And I'm thinking about, I'm trying to think creatively like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that would kind of be dope. You know what I was thinking? If I was an Instagram couple and my girl was an Instagram model, I was an Instagram dude, she go on live and then I get on the Instagram and it's just my voice. And she could be trying on clothes and I can just be like, oh, I don't know, whatever. The cringiest shit ever. I don't like that. But like, that would be dope. Look, I would have all the girls like, uh, I fuck cringy. With I hate it. But look, um, IG was Insta Instagram. This is the last thing I got for Tech Corner too. Instagram was banned in Russia. So Damn, that 80 sucks. million they users blocked. That. They was trying to fight. Did you hear that, though? 80 million users yeah. blocked access. And my thing is like, damn, does that mean that they're not getting 80 million users worth of money? Like, not damn, that. like, you know? The biggest thing is the fact that they, that a, a lot of those users only tie to certain families, certain outlets outside of Russia yeah. was Instagram. The head of Instagram, the CEO of Instagram came out and said, they're trying to ban us from Russia and it's going to cut off people from a lot of lines of communication that they only have through yeah, Instagram. Instagram. And they, they were trying to fight it. So it sucks that that actually fucking happened. Wow. Yeah, I didn't bring that up as good news. I thought that was definitely going to be some bad news. Because although Russia has their stuff going on with Ukraine, I understand that there's going to be some people who not even in that That mix. are casualties, mm -hmm. yeah, that are just... If you got a favorite app or, I'm sorry, a favorite profile or something like that, and it just goes away, y'all, it might have been a Russian-based joint. You never That's know. True. If you got like a little company, you order your... You know how people order, like, I order my coffee mugs from this... You never know, yeah, you no know? bullshit. Don't get nothing from Et mm -mm. Etsy. <laughs> Etsy, you you see something you like on a keychain. I had a Von, this Von Miller sticker that's on the back of my computer. Got it from Etsy. Took three months to get. I forgot I that had it. Good. I just got it in the mail one day. Like, oh shit, I did order this back in on Christmas. Right, that shit like <laughs> AliExpress or Alibaba. Like, it shouldn't come in four months. It's ridiculous. You got it for a good price though. <laughs> no bullshit. <laughs> but all right, y'all. Episode 92, 92 weeks consistent on the road to 100 episodes. Yes, sir. And I hope y'all can see that the quality getting better. Yeah, man. Somebody tell Terrell he need to get his outfits up. This green sweater, you gotta look like he about to go on a grass yeah, boy, cut. You, gotta, you look like you ready for a Sunday service. You got on a Jesus is King fit. Terrell look like he ready for a grass cut. You got a, you got on a trash <laughs> album fit. <laughs> Make sure y'all stay safe. I know the mask mandates is over and stuff like that, but just try to stay safe. Do your vitamin C, C moss. Let's you know what? Next time, S3. S3, like damn, I can't say, say nothing. You, I, sometimes it just ain't, ain't your time to speak. How about that? Where, look, where I'm from, bullies get bullied. <laughs>